So what happened, right? You walked up to this girl, you started talking at first, she wasn't very receptive. Then you got lucky, quite frankly, with the name thing and triggered some kind of a response. And then you were kind of like cool but player-ish and triggered some shit tests. So if you could choose to have it exist or not exist, which would you choose? Not exist. Not exist, right? So that strongly leans towards ignoring it, mm -hmm. right? So in general, ignore it. Mm -hmm. If you have a really brilliant tease mm -hmm. that you just cannot help but get off your chest because it's so good, then by all means tease, okay. right? But if there's something that's not a positive for the set, okay. you are free to ignore it. Okay. You don't have to call out every single thing. And yeah. so specifically, if the girl's being unreceptive in some way, being like, you're being, you're being tough to talk to. Why would you ever call that out? Yeah, yeah. It can only make things worse. Yeah. Well, you're giving me the limp dick handshake, or you're giving me this like, un, 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 <laughs> limp, 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 sorry, limp fish, whatever, limp, limp fish handshake. Um, yeah, if you, if you call it out, it's, it's only a negative thing, right? So don't bother calling it out. Don't, don't make a big deal of it. That's the, that's the major lesson yeah. here, right? Yeah. In the same way that if a girl is like refusing to talk to you, you don't call out and be like, oh, you're trying hard not to talk to me. Because now you've taken this thing that's nebulous and, and kind of eph ephemeral and you've made it like extremely tangible. Yeah. So you've taken this negative and made it like a serious solid negative. Yeah. Okay? You really want to avoid doing that. Yes. Right? So when, when non-positive things happen, oftentimes the best thing to do is just ignore them rather than call attention to them. If you are going to call attention to them, you have to tease. Right? And if, if you're going to tease, it has to be like actually exaggerated and funny, not just commenting on it. Okay. So this is actually quite bad. Like the yeah. set was going yeah. quite well up to this yeah. point, but this is, this is actually just full bad. you finally like absolutely pass the shit test. Like there is an absolute, at this moment there's a truce and you agreed you like each other, right? And so what you do here makes sense. You're like, okay, fine, I, we've agreed we like each other, let me try and close. Fair enough, okay, I get it. However, you've only like just passed the shit test one second ago, yeah. right? So instead of being like, okay, I passed the shit test, let me immediately rush to a close. How about I pass the shit test, now we have a good interaction and because we have a good interaction, I can qualify the girl. I can build rapport with the girl. I can get to know the girl. I can all these different things. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, um, <laughs> basically it's almost like you had, you had two countries at war and you literally just declared a ceasefire. And then the next day the president calls the other one and says, like, let's be best friends now. <laughs> right? it's, it's just a little, it's so sudden. And it's yeah. so like, it, 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 it doesn't have as much fullness as it could, right? You finally got the opportunity to do in the set what you'd really like to do, which is connect. Now, if you were to connect over a coffee, that would be absolutely good. Um, but here I would probably um, give some kind of a, um, some kind of an indication of the, the truce or some kind of, an, like, some kind of like an agreement or enjoy the fact that both of you like each other for a minute. Uh -huh and actually make that a thing in the interaction. Like just call attention to it because it's a positive thing, right? And then see how she responds to that. Because you basically were like, okay, I got it good, now let me rush to the close. Yeah. And it just looks rushed. It does make sense to close here because you, you like finally got a positive. But again, you should, have, you should have enough faith in yourself that you believe the longer you're gonna interact with her, the more she's gonna like you rather than the less. And so you should believe that while you may get a close now, now that you've agreed that it's positive, if you talked for another 30 seconds or a minute and got to know each other, you'd be even more likely to get a close yeah. at that point. Granted, the, the previous line was bad, but she actually was fine with it. Mm -hmm. She actually accepted it because she liked your vibe. So now why are you continuing to apologize? Mm -hmm. Again, move on. Mm -hmm. You don't need to address it, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's kind of, I don't know if you can call this a life principle, but it kind of is. Um, by the way, I'll give you guys a good re book recommendation, which is where I kind of got this idea from, which it, it, it dovetails with things I've, I've learned in the past. Um, but there's a great book called... Um, the Art of Learning um, by Joshua Waitzkin. Who, Joshua Waitzkin was a, um, he was a, a very top level chess player. One of the lessons that he had, and this is, this is a lesson from, from chess, but also applies to life as well. In, in the game of chess, um, there's kind of levels of mistakes you can make. Like if, if you were to like have a computer rate your game, it'll tell you this move was a blunder, which means it was just like absolute game losing mistake. This move's a mistake, which means at a high enough level, it's probably game losing, but maybe not. And then you have like inaccuracies, which are like, they're not good. Then maybe they'll give you a slight disadvantage, but they're not like, you can recover from an inaccuracy or maybe like you, you may have gone from a winning position to an even position or an even position to slightly worse, but it's not like you can, it's not game over, okay? And the point he made is that in chess, usually the first mistake you make in a position does not make the position unsalvageable. 
like oftentimes, but but it's very easy once you make that posi- that mistake, and especially if you thought you had a really good game, and now you're like, oh shit, now I have to struggle. You thought you're winning and pushing, you're, you're you're in a winning position, pushing to win, and now all of a sudden you're like losing, and you're like d- like trying to hang on. It's very easy to in that moment get frustrated, and literally on the next move or the move after, push too hard or press to get back what you had before, or just get frustrated and fed up, and then you make the the, the deadly mistake. So oftentimes your first mistake isn't a problem, but when you start trying to correct your first mistake or try, start trying to get back what you had before the first mistake, you very quickly double down and make the game ending blunder. Right? This is very common here. So here, yeah, you, you had a really good set and you made what was definitely a mistake, but she still indicated right after a mistake, you're still fine, I still like you. Yeah. Right? Maybe not as, as much as I did a minute ago, yeah. but she still was going along with what she still agrees. A little hesitation, but she's still there. Yeah. So you made your inaccuracy but you were aware of your inaccuracy uh-huh. and then you blundered. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what you just did here. Uh-huh. Um, but, and, and the way you blundered is you're, you're now justifying, your, you're now talking about your inaccuracy. You're now talking about the mistake you made, yeah. which in game is a big problem because yeah. it's showing insecurity. It's making this thing that was a small inaccuracy. Now you're just blowing it up and putting a microscope on it. Yeah. Like it's just not good. It's yeah. just not smart. But don't worry about in game where you were, worry about where you are. If you had an amazing, amazing set and the girl's friends came in and distracted her and kind of made it go from an amazing set to a just like just pretty good set, don't be like, oh shit, it was amazing, now it's pretty good, this sucks, now I gotta get it back, or this is amazing, now it's pretty good, she's stopping liking me, I have to do something crazy. Instead be like, I'm in a pretty good set. Right? If you had just walked into a set and it was this good, you'd be happy and you'd pursue it. Right. So don't ask yourself how good it was, don't get caught up in like how you look or whether you made a mistake or whether you were perfect. Just be like, okay. This is okay. This is good enough. Let me play my let me let me play the position as it stands. Here's the funny thing. I don't think your answers to the shit test were particularly wonderful, yeah. but they did the job. Mm-hmm. And clearly when she said that's actually refreshing, whatever she indicated that what you had done on, on net had passed it. Mm-hmm. So that's what happens when you pass a shit test, you get a number that actually like, you know, has some qualification is actually potentially solid. Yeah. So good job.